First World War devastated the lives of a generation of young men. Technology had come on so fast. It was a weird kind of mash of the old style of thinking, but then with all this new technology like machine guns and tanks added to the mix, which created a really a massive war which suffered casualties unlike any had seen before. Thousands upon thousands of people were dying every hour on different fronts around the world. Quick boys, an ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was yelling out and stumbling, and floundering like a man in fire or lime. <coughs> Dim through the misty panes and thick green light, under a green sea, I saw him drowning. If in some smothering dreams, you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face like a devil sick of sin. You know, when you come back from the war, you were kind of alienated to a certain extent because you've been through this experience and then you come back to a, to a people who had not been exposed to the realities of that war. There were over 80,000 reported cases of shell shock. No doubt they'll soon get well. The shock and strain have caused this stammering, disconnected talk. Of course, they're longing to go out again. These boys with all scarred faces learning to walk. They'll soon forget their hauntedness, their cowed subjection to the ghosts of friends who died. Their dreams that drip with murder, they'll be proud of glorious war that shattered all their pride. Men who went out to battle, grim and glad. Children with eyes that hate you, broken and mad. I think it's changed quite dramatically modern day really. Like, there is a massive understanding modern day wise of how a battlefront and how warfare can affect the soldier really. But that said, there's a lot more support and everything, but they're still put in situations where they could come out on the other side with those disabilities and with that kind of horrific kind of experience really. When I first came out, I was all right for about the first two, three years. And then I had started to get panic attacks and severe depression. And about 10, 10, 15 years ago, I was actually diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and severe depression. Yeah, I did have flashbacks. The best way of thinking is like the holographic, the holodeck on the Starship Enterprise. It's like, it's not solid, it's, it's, it's like see-through. You can just, you can just see the scene. But I still have nightmares, uh, and I have nightmares every night. I've had nightmares every night since I've left the army. Dying, being killed, people don't understand it. Oh, you weren't in a war. I was in a war, it was not, uh, it's called Northern Ireland. And it was war, it was a very strange war, because it was like walking down your, your normal high street. I'm not, I'm not sure I've really come out the other side completely, and I've, I, I'm very distrusting of people. I don't trust people at all. When I walk down the street, I'm always looking over my shoulder. I, I don't like crowds, I don't like, you know, if, if I go to a pub or a restaurant, I'm always moving my back to the wall, watching the door. I, it, I don't think you ever get rid of it, unfortunately. Because I don't have, you know, a limb missing or, or a pot on my leg, people think, oh, there's nothing wrong with you. But they're not there at three in the morning when I wake up from a nightmare and I'm sweating and, and I'm scared and, uh, and, and I can't go back to sleep. They're not there when I'm having a panic attack. People find it hard to understand, which I think is a general case with mental health anyway. Do they matter, those dreams from the pit? You can drink and forget and be glad. And people won't say that you're mad. For they'll know that you fought for your country. And no one will worry a bit. <laughs> <laughs>